By the end of this video, the homepage of my WordPress theme will include a post loop that will display recent blog posts in a paginated grid. First, I'm going to add a four column structure block. I'm choosing a layout of four columns as I want the blog posts on my theme's homepage to be displayed in rows of four. Next, I'm going to delete the last three columns, leaving only the first. I'm then going to set the WordPress loop value for the column to post. Doing this turns the column into an item container for a post loop. This means I can place elements such as images and text in the column and set those items to output post values from the WordPress database. I'm now going to click the Add Brick button and add an image brick. I want this image brick to display the featured image that is assigned to a blog post. To do that, I'll set the data source for the image to Featured Image. Let's switch to Preview Mode and see our post loop in action. As you can see, the post loop is now populated with data from my local WordPress site. The loop is rendering four columns, each containing a blog post featured image. Let's exit Preview Mode and build this loop out a little more. Next, I'm going to add a heading brick. I want this text heading to display the post title. To do that, I'm going to set the data source to title. I'll also center the heading and set its text color to black. Now let's switch to preview mode and check out the results. As you can see, the loop now includes the text headings that are being correctly populated with the blog post titles. The local WordPress site that is providing the simulation data is configured to show four blog posts per page. I'll need to add some paginate controls if I want my theme to allow users to navigate to older posts from the home page. Let's exit preview mode and get those paginate controls added. I want the paginate controls to sit within the same block as my post loop grid. However, I don't want them in the same row. To achieve this, I'll need to add an additional row below the current one. To do that, I'll first select the parent row via the layer tree. Then I'll click the Add Brick button at the bottom of the selection marker to access the brick bar. Now I'm going to search for the WordPress Paginate Brick and add it. Because I had a row selected when I added the Paginate Brick, Blocks automatically wrapped the brick in an additional row and column to prevent the layout becoming deformed. Before I preview the results, I'll finish this section off by adding a main title to the post loop grid. Again, I'll select the parent row of the post loop grid, but this time I'll add a heading brick, which will also automatically wrap in a new row and column. I'll set this heading content to something more meaningful center it, and set the text color to black. Let's switch to preview mode and see how that looks. The loop grid section is looking a lot more familiar now. When previewing a WordPress theme within blocks, a lot of the visual style and content can be simulated. However, not all of the WordPress interface functionality can be. As you can see, clicking the post navigation links doesn't give us the desired effect. To test the paginate control functionality, we will need to export our theme and test it in WordPress. It only takes a few seconds, so let's do that now. Because I set a default export location for my theme in an earlier video, I can simply use the keyboard shortcut Command-E to quickly export. I'm asked if I would like to completely replace what is already present in the defined export location. I'm going to select Yes. I'm now going to switch over to my web browser, where I have my local WordPress test site open. If I head over to the WordPress Appearance options, I can see my WordPress theme is available to activate. So let's go ahead and activate it. If I head back to the front end of my site, my theme is now active, and it's displaying the home page with the post loop that I just created. If I test the pagination controls, you can see that they now let me navigate to older blog posts. In the next video, I will add a footer to my WordPress theme 
with four customizable widget areas.